اینکه که شما این مرد پرسل فست آه، تو چکا باید از بلو سکول I think it would be great to frame a little bit how the blue school came to be, was born. Because uh, you are an artist, the rest of the co-founders of the school are also artists. Yes. You work in Birthway and you have a globally acclaimed entertainment company. And I don't know when and why you had this idea of creating a school. As six artists, um, uh, we felt like there was something missing in culture uh, when it came to schools. So Eastern schools, Western schools, they have so much focus on academic excellence. Um, but today, where you can have more information in an iPhone than it lives in any library, you don't have to be so much filled with knowledge and facts. What we felt was we needed a balance of academic mastery, creative thinking, and self and social intelligence. And that these are the key ingredients, the whole person, the whole child, that would help make the transition into the 21st century and uh, also help to build a harmonious and sustainable world together. Um, from 20 plus years of doing Blue Man Group, and having millions of people come to our show and have it resonate, um, what we felt like was that these key ingredients like collaboration, innovation, uh, treating people in sort of a special manner, um, that these all copy and pasted very well into a school environment. So how would you describe the Blue School to people that are not familiar with it? And what make it, make it stand out from a, a traditional, let's say, school? Right. So um, a lot of, uh, has been written about Blue School, about it being a very innovative environment. Um, and I think that one of the main ingredients to leading to that innovation is that we do have this balanced approach of academic mastery, creative thinking, and self and social intelligence. And the children, the students, are constantly surfing through these different elements. And um, it's an inquiry-based approach. Everything comes from the question. And the students work individually. They work in small groups and medium groups and large groups. They change. Uh, and the, the constant asking of these questions, the questions coming from the teachers, co questions coming from the students to their own groups, answering, leading to more questions, um, you know, in, in a uh, academic excellence test and drill environment, our approach uh, can seem very innovative. Um, in some circles, it's even considered kind of radical. So when a student finishes his schooling here at the Blue School, mm -hmm. what are the, the learnings, what are the fundamental skills, values that he has acquired compared to, again, a traditional, more traditional school? We have a, a whole set of unique mission, vision, values, and these values get sewn in to the education experience at all times. It's an unusual community in that we treasure, we value the triad of the teachers, the students, and the parents all coming together, all equals at the table, uh, inquirers, uh, their learners, all with the goal of having lifelong, joyful pursuit of learning. So um, it's a very value-based community uh, that where these uh, mission, vision, values sort of guides the direction that we go, helps with the decision-making, and helps have all the teachers, students, and parents be on the same page of what it is that we're trying to accomplish with this innovative approach. I would like you to explain to us how do you put together 
those core values of the school right. with, let's say, more traditional subjects like yeah. math, science, uh, literacy, etc. Right. Um, at the heart of the matter, it's all about starting with an inquiry approach. So starting with the question. Um, and the, the alchemy of Blue School is partly that the teachers ask the questions, that leads to more questions from the students. The students ask each other questions. They answer the questions, which leads to even more questions. And this process uh, uh, leads to a excited um, pursuit of, of, of the learning process. What, what we're trying to do always is to demystify the learning and teaching process. We're trying to show the children how they learn, how the teachers are teaching, and this uh, uh, demystification of the learning and teaching process leads to a metacognition about how our own thinking is, our own internal state, our own internal emotional state, um, uh, as well as uh, the group, uh, the collaborative state. So um, uh, another component is that we have a very integrated approach to uh, teaching and learning. Integrated uh, in that science and social studies are combined. Uh, uh, that, that the math of inside of a, of a, of a book that you're reading you know, how far is it from here to there, then the math can be integrated in. So there's a lot of project work. There's, uh, and all because the neuroscience shows us, tells us that when children learn in an integrated way, when they have a little bit of say in what it is that they're gonna study, so it's all sort of evolving through the teacher-student process, that when that then they go farther, they go deeper, they retain more, and they enjoy it more. And that's the overall goal, to, to learn how to learn and to uh, enjoy it and be collaborative in it uh, all the way through. Man, and this is very interesting, and it was one of the most shocking things to me when I was uh, learning about the Blue School, that you incorporate cognitive neuroscience into yes. the curriculum and in how you design your educational approach. And uh, I would like you uh, to elaborate a bit more the role that neuroscience plays yeah. in your approach to education. Uh, very early on, Dr. Daniel Siegel from UCLA and the founder of the Mindside Institute, he advised us that it's not just the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, that is, in traditional education, but really you have to add in resilience, reflection, and relationship. And by adding those things in and uh, sewing in the latest studies of neuroscience, um, that that can really lead to the ability for uh, the students, but even us as adults, to be able to change one's brain. And that's a key element that, you know, that the idea, oh, I'm not good at this or I can't learn this, that's just simply not the case. We now know, and only in the last 10 years or so, that you can actually change the neural pathways, the way your brain works. And so part of that is the uh, adding in relationship resilience and reflection, reflective practices are critical for the students, the teachers, the parents, uh, 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 professional development amongst the teachers, the peer-to-peer, mentor-to-peer, you know, uh, amongst the students, even to sit and think just for a couple minutes what your day was like. But reflective practices can look many, many different ways. And so all of this we borrow from neuroscience to tell us that our, uh, this creates more neural pathways, more active neural pathways, uh, a richer environment uh, 
that, and, and that you can change your brain to be good at things that you put your effort into. How is a typical class here at the Blue School? Um, there, there's actually no typical, no typical, except to say that the teacher will start the year with an overreaching question. So again, I'll give you some examples. My own son in fourth grade was in a class and the class started day one, what is power? Who has power? Power. Um, fascinating, fascinating subject because then that led to more questions from the students. Well, is, is there good power and bad power? And do some people have power over other people who then have less power? So then we start to get into social issues. So that thread, which can sort of go anywhere, led to uh, slavery in the United States. Um, it somehow led to uh, the great migration from Southern United States to the North and to New York City. Um, the uh, cultural um, explosion in a good way of, 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 the, of Harlem, then how Harlem then had a, a, a sort of decline. Um, and then the Harlem Renaissance. And that lasted from the beginning of September to the middle of June. It just lasted the whole year, which you don't actually know if it's, if a thread, you know, you don't know when, how long a thread is gonna, this is like a dance between the teachers and the children and the, and the students. Okay, so uh, in the uh, final presentation of learning, which is a major year-end project at the school, the students chose their heroes of the Harlem Renaissance. So it could be uh, political activists, a lot of musicians, uh, Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald. There were other people who helped um, uh, with civil rights. So everyone, all the students chose their uh, hero activists that they were going to um, uh, report on. Then, in the music, they all learned the music of that time uh, that was being played in the Cotton Club and different places. Then they set up their own fictitious Harlem club of the time, and they served the food, they danced the dances, <laughs> and the whole school and the whole neighborhood was invited to this club where it was a culmination of all this learning that came out of this one question, what is power? Those questions change from one year to the other or are always the same? Sometimes they're the same, but sometimes they're different and evolve, and it really depends on uh, what's going on. But the, the, the exciting part for the teachers is um, just like the students are learning and uh, becoming lifelong joyful learners and, and asking questions and, and exploring, so are the teachers. And this is one of the reasons why this is such a satisfying um, place to be for teachers. So um, uh, all a long way to say is that the questions can change and can evolve based on what had happened in the year before or prior years. Um, because these threads are very uh, uh, unpredictable. And also, the questions change based on what's going on in our times. Uh, the questions also, while maybe not always directly hitting the most current events, are meant to spur uh, thoughtfulness about where we've been, where we are, and where we're going as a culture, as a, as a, as a community on the planet, um, and how we can all work together. How do you find the teachers, appropriate teachers right. for the Blue School? Are you looking for specific skills or...? Right, right. So several questions in there. The first I'll say is that um, when a teacher goes through a, a great teaching program, we've been told that it's more reflects 
the practice as a blue school. Unfortunately, the system has gotten all twisted. The teachers get out of school, they're all enthusiastic, ready to change children's lives, and they get a very set curriculum stuck in front of them. And largely because, and this is in both uh, free public schools in the United States, as well as paid private independent schools, there's so much emphasis on test results that the entire education system, I think it's probably similar in Europe, I know it's true in a lot of Asia, has become drill, 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 test, test, test. And this is the simplest, it's like a really a lowest common denominator way of being able to evaluate children, which is insane to us. Um, and now to evaluate teachers, like there are actual teachers in the United States in the, in the government system that are paid more or less based on the children's test scores going up and down. The, the whole thing is, is absurd in that regard. What we try to do, what the teachers try to do is a whole child approach. Of course they have to have good testing skills. Of course, all play, through school, many times in adult life, tests are relevant and important. So we want our students to be able to have the best testing skills possible. Does it end there? Are they a number on a, on a test sheet? Of course not. There's a whole child approach where they're emotional state, creative state, their, their ability to innovate, their ability to collaborate, learning to do things on your own, your ability to organize your own learning process and interactions with other people. That's inner structure. The teachers learn so much. The, the thing I hear over and over and over again is, well, first of all, way more difficult way to teach because there's no lesson plan. It's all unfolding as we go. Way more satisfying. So many teachers who are here, are there, they say they are here because this is how they feel like they were trained to teach and this is their dream of how to teach. So that's so important that the teachers feel as um, jazzed and excited as the students. Matt, I can totally understand why students thrive and enjoy being in an environment like the Blue School. Yes. But once they finish their schooling here yes. and they have to continue their education in other institutions right. at university, how easy is that transition from this very innovative approach into a more traditional standard one? Yeah, we have students who have moved on. Uh, either graduated or moved to other parts of the country or other parts of the world, and the results are phenomenal. Um, the graduates have been embraced by the educational community in the United States like, like we couldn't have even dreamed of. I mean, we did dream it, actually, but it was even better. Uh, all these amazing uh, uh, name brand schools in New York and in New England have just said, not we just want your children, we want a lot of your students. When you have that secure base, when you're a flexible thinker that it can read people, can like, oh, you're, you're emotional, set. you seem a little upset, let's, before we try to keep going, let's talk about that who are comfortable working one-on-one -on -one or in a group of six or in a group of 26. These are the skills that they're gonna take to their next school, to their college, to their workplace. When you talk with people that are rethinking the educational system, one of the issues that almost always comes into the conversation is technology because we are rethinking education for people right. that are digital natives that were born with the internet, with the smartphones, yes. and uh, how do you incorporate that technology in the Blue School? 
Well, the, 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 the question of technology is one of the uh, central questions facing everybody in school today and everybody who's not in school today, right? So um, the first place we start is again, just like we have a metacognition about our learning process, about our emotional state, um, we want to have a metacognition about technology. Technology is neither good nor bad. Of course, it can be used for really great things and it can be a big problem. So the children after a certain age, they use computers and iPads and um, because you have to, you have to have good skills in knowing how to use the technology. We prim primarily like to use technology here for research, for uh, compiling, organizing, and presentation. The students are free to present in almost any manner that they want, everything from uh, a written document, to a film, to audio, to dance, or some kind of creative expression. There, the, there's a lot of options, and technology figures into many of those options. Um, uh, but learning to use technology as, a, as an important tool um, for organizing and, and a lot of data and, and presenting, these are all great things. So, but at the same time, we know that people can have their issues with technology and we want to teach. And, and that's another perfect place where it really takes the triad, the teacher parent and the parents and the students to work all together on a common vocabulary, a common way to think about how we're going to think about technology. Matt, tell me a little bit about the board, because uh, you have a, a very impressive board of advisors with uh, neuroscientists and uh, creative practitioners yeah. and educators. How did you involve all these people also in, uh, in designing the school's curriculum and yeah. a teaching approach? Well, I love talking about the advisory board because um, our advisors are so integral to uh, what makes Blue School Blue School. Um, remember, uh, the six founders, of the six founders, only one had um, any educational experience at all, and that was through art therapy, creative arts therapy. Um, uh, and, the rest, and, and the rest of us were artists and entrepreneurs. So the very first thing you have to realize in that situation is as non-educators, it's wonderful to try to reinvent school and reinvent an approach to learning uh, because you have the lens of a non-educator, but you also have to uh, say at the same time, let's get the smartest, most experienced, uh, most innovative people in neuroscience, in uh, education technologies, in psychology, because we think they're all integrated, uh, onto our board of advisors. So um, we decided to just try to approach <laughs> the people we thought were the greatest people in the world in, in these areas. Like, why not? Like, you know. And so when we approached a Sir Ken Robinson or a Dr. Dan Siegel, um, uh, uh, and even a David Rock from uh, the, the uh, Neuro Institute, here's, what, here's the interesting conversation. They write books. They teach, they write papers, but we got to go to them and say, hey, if you want to take all of this writing you've done and all of this teaching and see it happening in practice, then let's partner together uh, on Blue School. And for many of our advisory board members, we had one conversation and they were in. I would like you to talk to us a little bit how challenging it was to integrate your very innovative approach to education with the standard model of education. Every school, whether it's a startup school, 12 years old or 112 years old, is always in a state of change and it always has to deliver because it's the children. What makes our situation particularly unique is that um, most people were raised through a more traditional technique uh, approach, and so what their 
parents are seeing of their children at Blue School doesn't necessarily line up to their own uh, experiences and their own thoughts of what school should be. For some people, that's okay. For some people like me, who I would never have wished my type of school experience on my own child. It, the, in fact, that's why one of the reasons that we started a school was to give them a completely different experience. At the beginning, the tricky thing was to have people truly believe that if you are about teaching students to treat each other in a special manner, to understand their own internal state, to try to understand the other person's internal state, that's empathy, that's compassion, to work collaboratively, to uh, replace competition with innovation and creativity and have a group competing with themselves to be better selves. These, these uh, themes resonated with a certain narrow uh, uh, spectrum of parents and families and children, but it was enough to get us started. Now, it seems like uh, with the 10, 15 years of neuroscience behind us, with the shift of education to away from, there's a, the, a movement to get it away from the drill and test, that the whole child is important. We are feeling that we're in the exact right place at the exact right time. And on top of it, now we have data of our, uh, of our uh, students scoring very high on tests, of our students getting into the best high schools uh, in, in the city and in the country. Um, that, uh, that they're adapting very well, that they're becoming leaders. And um, we have an example of, 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 of one of our graduates who actually changed the policy of a school <laughs> before uh, that, that student even got there. So these are examples of how uh, Blue School students, being the kind of social activists that evolves out of this approach um, that are really thriving. And it also, of course, gives uh, credence and um, validity to the approach to make it easier for uh, future fam. When you combine critical perspective thinking that um, I can have one perspective, you can have a different perspective, and guess what? They both can live simultaneously. And that, 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 that's something that I think, at least in the United States, has been shifting away for several years, maybe a couple decades. But critical perspective thinking and taking, that um, integrating uh, neural thought, neural pathways into uh, to expand our thinking, to expand our practices. Um, I think that these are going to be critical tools for people who are going to live in the mid 21st century and late 20, 21st century. And so we would like to get these young people on that path. And I think what we're doing in Blue School is helping to lead that. And so when I talk about social activism, I'm not, you know, talking about overthrowing governments or I'm talking about uh, to grab the reins and make this country and this world a better place because these children uh, believe in them, in themselves, believe in their own uh, thought process and believe in their ability to make change. Matt, thank you so much thank you. for sharing this time with us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.